Hey everybody, welcome back to the nesting comps tutorials in After Effects CS6. I'm your host, Buddy Blackford, and we're going to keep on going on about pre-comps and show you a little bit more about what's going on besides just an intro. Now, if you watched the previous tutorial about the introduction to nesting comps, you'll see that I took um, three uh, or four of my layers which were in my logo and move them around and put them into a precomp. Now, what we're gonna do now is show you uh, a little bit how you can move the precomp around and everything like that. Now, you may have noticed that when you have a precomp, it will um, it will keep the transparency that has been made in the uh, composition in your precomp, and it'll be it'll show up in your composition here. So if I go and add another different kind of background, you can see that the transparency is kept. The canvas of the precomp is going to be the same as the um, is going to be the same as how big your precomp actually was created. So if I wanted to change the composition settings here, I could change the size of the precomp and let's change it down a little bit see what happens so we, there we go you can see that the canvas is actually getting smaller while the actual objects in the precomp are not so I have made it a little bit smaller in resolution and now the actual canvas size for the precomp is smaller and not the whole entire um, size now you can see that I would be able to animate the position of the precomp here with everything as if they were uh, parented, all parented together. So I could just keyframe here, actually click on the stopwatch and then just move down here and you can animate the position of your precomps. So if you don't feel like parenting everything and having like a big mess, then um, that's a, a good reason for a precomp. And like I just said, precomps help um, lower or help reduce the amount of clutter that are in your scene here. Now, one thing with precomps is is that um, sometimes when you precompose something and bring it in, the collapse transformation tool will be turned off. Now, you want to you may need to turn that on sometimes to keep the um, different like rasterizations and vector properties of whatever is within your precomp. So you may want to turn that on sometimes. And in our case here, it is uh, the same because um, the uh, scale is the same. So if I zoom in here for you guys, we're at 100% so everything should be um, everything should be the the way we want it to look and I take off the transformation class transformation tool and go to scale this up we can see that the edges of the words are blurry the edges of our logos are blurry so we want to make sure that we check the class transformation tool and then everything will be in its position that we want and everything will be crisp around the edges just like our vectors and shape layers should be Sometimes when you create a precomp, everything that you have uh, animated within may not be in the right spot that you want it to be in. So you want to also make sure that you have this checked on and that will bring everything into the right areas that it needs to be. Now I'm just going to bring this back to its original scale so we don't need to mess with it. I wanted to point you up here to the top of the composition panel where we can switch between the uh, different compositions and precomps here. If I click on logo, it's going to bring me quickly to the logo uh, composition. If I go to text, it's going to quickly bring me to the text. And then we have these drop down arrows to, to see how our um, text and logo are combined. So we've got our text here, which is the main comp, and the logo with the arrow showing here that it's going into the text comp. We've got our um, different ways of setting this up here in our sort mode so if you don't like going it going from uh, right to left and want it to go left to right there we go and I mean 
to me that seems a little easier most people read from left to right so I usually switch that over you can also switch between your comps down here but if you don't have this one open you can easily go to open it up here so we'll switch to our logo up here by clicking on logo and it'll bring it up quickly instead of having to search through your project menu to go and find it which reminds me I should put these in the comps folder so I don't get myself all confused so I mean if you don't want to be switching between your effects and your project panel as much just use these uh, up here to switch back and forth just a little handy thing to save you some time another thing that I want to let you guys know about nesting comps is you want to keep some of the attributes the same and the attributes I mean by in the composition settings so if we go to composition composition settings and we're in the wrong one here let's go into our logo and then go into composition composition settings we want to make sure that the settings here are the same frame rate as and pixel aspect ratio as the um, settings in the text so 24 and square pixels are what we want there and our resolution at full let's see if they're the same in our text square pixels 24 and resolution at full if you don't you're gonna have some errors when you're rendering and things are gonna be choppy and they may not look the same and something will be off and you'll know because I mean it's happened to me a, a few times trying to throw something into another uh, composition that doesn't have the same frame rate it looks weird so those are pretty much just a bunch of tips for you to remember when you're using nested comps and uh, I'll stop this part of the tutorial here and we'll get on to some more tips in the next tutorial so thanks for watching this one and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial where like I just said we're gonna be doing some nested comps and uh, watch out for those stupid wasps so see you guys later and stay safe